Beautiful. Beautiful. Welcome, 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 Marion. Good morning. Welcome all family this morning. Okay. So we're going to be talking about today um, to understand uh, an objective about taking hold of and living in freedom. Living in freedom in Christ is so important to understand for every believer. It's not a one-off experience. It needs to become a way of life. Living in your freedom in Christ, hallelujah, needs to become a way of life, hallelujah. It needs to become um, a way that's deep rooted inside of us. It's not something that just happens once, it's a way of life. And to provide us with a strategy that will continually renew our minds. The, 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 the verse in Romans 12, 2 says, do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed of the renewing of your mind. This, then you will able, then you will be able, let me just admit you're brilliant. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. Hallelujah. Look at the scripture again in Romans 12, 2. It says, do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His will is good. Hallelujah. Number one, his will is pleasing. Mm -hmm. And also his will is perfect. Hallelujah. So, so those are the three areas. His will is good for us. His will is pleasing for us, but his will is also perfect. Hallelujah. So we focus on the truth. All of us have mental strongholds. All of us right here, right now. If you were to go through uh, our walk, you know, you, you know, some of you might not even want to own them. Some of you might, you know, might think that you're, you're all right, that you're in that process with God. Wearing them. But if we're honest, we've all got some strongholds. Hallelujah. We've all got these strongholds that need to be broken. And that can also create what is called a strong tower. Block us. Block our pathway. That's what a stronghold is. It blocks your pathway to freedom. And some of us have mental strongholds, which are just ways of thinking that are not in line with God's truth. Mm. And we will look at uh, uh, areas of our success in continuing to walk in that freedom and grow in maturity depends on what extent we wish to continue to renew our minds and train ourselves to distinguish between good and evil. So I'll give you an example of that, right? Uh, and for me, you know, I'm someone who's been around recovery for a very, very long time. I've been around recovery for many, 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 many years. And my first stint at recovery right I, you know i stayed clean for a very 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 long time hallelujah resting on my own power hallelujah my life was very successful too resting on my own power and even though that i knew god i wasn't submitting to god because i was resting on my own power now for me I know today that I cannot afford to rest on my own power. So if God places me anywhere, even if it's a good thing where he places me on, I need to submit and hold on to his power as well as anything else where he places me. So what I'm saying to you guys, for those of you in 12 step recovery, it's great. It's powerful. It leads us, it guides us, it helps us stay clean, but it's not enough to save us. Hallelujah. Mm. God saves. Hallelujah. And I and I pray today that those of you in 12-step recovery right now, please do not take offense with this. I'm sharing my past experience. That it's not enough. We mm. need God. We need his power. And we need to surrender to his power and his will. Why? Because when we get to that step three, it says we made a decision to turn our will over to the care of God as we understand him. <coughs> God as we understand him. Well, 
if you're here today, I hope you understand your God as Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. Because this is what this ministry is based on. It's based on following Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's based on following Jesus. Now, if I look at, we made a decision, we made a decision to turn our will over to the care of God as we understand him. Father, Son, Spirit. Hallelujah. God, as we understand him, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit made a decision to turn our will over to God as we understand it. Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. His will is good and pleasing and perfect. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. His will. Think about it. We made a decision to turn our will over to, to God as we understand him. Well, if you're on this platform, Jesus, God, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Made a decision. Turn our will over to God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the helper. Jesus said, He said, When I am gone, I'm going to leave you my helper. The Spirit of the Living God. Hallelujah. That's inside each one of you. Jesus is not here, right here, right now. But Jesus is helper. The Holy Spirit is inside of you. And that is the gift of the believer hallelujah that jesus said hallelujah when i'm gone i'm gonna leave you my spirit hallelujah so your his spirit is inside of you hallelujah and his will that of the spirit that's inside of you is good pleasing and perfect that's the will hallelujah oh hallelujah so all of us have mental strongholds so the ongoing transformation is that we become brand new creations when we first turn to Jesus. Hallelujah. But no, the stage is set for us to be transformed. The scripture says <laughs> to be conformed. Hallelujah. To be transformed in the renewal of your mind. The stage is set for your transformation to go further. When the word is used in the Bible, it refers to a process through which is a caterpillar because it's a beautiful butterfly it doesn't mean change just a little bit it means a really dramatic change hallelujah how do you think of that ongoing transformation happens what do you need to do to experience it do not conform to the patterns of this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind remember that the battle is for our minds our minds have been conditioned by the world. <clears throat> the other big man, influenced by Satan, the puppet master. So we've developed a whole host of default beliefs and thought patterns that don't match up to God's word. In other words, they are not actually true. For much of our lives, some of us have come from belief systems that have been shaped by our enemies. In other words, we've been absorbed, maybe from our families, maybe from conditions, maybe from institutions, maybe from the streets, maybe from wherever it is. But it's come from somewhere and it's a whole load of lies, <clears throat> a whole load of lives and half truths that really still today can affect us as believers. So when we become Christians, no one just presses a, a delete button in our minds and goes, D -d 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 -d, press delete, download, all unknown beliefs and unknown truths are gone. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Zink like a computer. Go, download gone. I am a new creature in Christ and I've just woken up and I am free. Hallelujah. <laughs> all my troubles have passed away. <laughs> I don't have these feelings or emotions or hear these things anymore because I'm a new creature in Christ. That would be lovely, wouldn't it? Delete button, computer, zzz, download, gone. I'm renewed in my mind. All my brain cells have been renewed and I'm just walking in the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm spirit filled Christian. Way. <laughs> Hallelujah. That would be nice. <laughs> For much of our lives, our belief system has been shaped by our enemies. And Christians, hallelujah, I need to tell you that we still have some of these old default programmings. We do have them. Those same old thought patterns, those same old fears might come up, those same old attitudes, those same old belief systems. And sometimes um, <laughs> the challenge is 
not to resort back to those old belief systems. Let me give an example. Someone's taking the mickey out of you and you, uh, so, someone who's, a, you know, can stand up for himself, been brought, been brought up. Give, and let me give you a bit. Let me give you a belief system. My mum used to say to me, if they do something to you, do them back. That was one of the greatest ones. Go on, Ivor. If they do something to you, do them back. Now, I had to sign them. I had to hear myself, you know, when my little three little daughters going to school, when I see them fighting, to stop myself saying, it's them back. <laughs> right? Today, because that's an old belief system that, you know, as a new creature in Christ, I cannot pass down to my children. <laughs> as much as I would like to say, clump him, Right. As much as I'd like to say, look, he, he clumped, clumped it. I cannot be using that belief system anymore. Why? Because I'm a new creature in Christ. Mm. When I go down the road and I'm driving down the car, you know, and someone cuts you up and you hear you. Uh, I'm like, oh. I feel good because I haven't got out of the car good because i haven't sworn at them i feel good because i haven't cussed them i feel good because you know i've found that self-control that fruit of the spirit in me that says oh, mm. i don't have to be like that anymore but my old belief system will be custom back so just giving you a few i've given you a few i'm giving you a few examples here yeah so no one pressed the delete button. We still have old default programmings. We still have some thought patterns, what the Bible calls the flesh. Flesh. Anybody feeling fleshy today? <laughs> take hold of our freedom and taking hold of our freedom is an essential part, but it's not enough. We need to change that default thinking. Thinking the word of God and the right thing to do if we want to grow as disciples. We need to replace it with what is actually true. And the key to that is, re is renewing our minds. For though we live in the world, we do not wage against the war of the world does. That the weapons that we fight with are not the weapons of the world on the contrary they have divine power to demolish strongholds hallelujah that we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of god and we take every thought captive to make it obedient to christ second <clears throat> Corinthians 10 3 5 the thought will come in but we need to take the thought captive to make it obedient to christ so Give me, give me, give me, give me let's, let's give an example. I'm walking down the road. There's a pretty girl down the road. She's got no clothes on. Uh, my natural consumption is I want to look. Hallelujah. Because I'm a man. She might have big boobs or whatever it is. Do you know what I mean? But I'm a married man. Hallelujah. Right? I, so I could look. And I'm like, oh, I shouldn't be looking there. Why am I looking there for? Yeah? I can stop. I need to take the thought captive. Why? Because if I continue in that, it will set me up for something that's not good for me. Yeah, it will set me up for something that's no good for me. You know, I come from a place where I'm a thief. You know, people present stuff to me. Do you know what I mean? In fact, I think sometimes the whole world's setting traps for me. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? You walk down the road, you see bags. Of, you know, when it, when 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 you was out there grafting, you never saw opportunities like you see today. Hallelujah. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> as new creatures in Christ, come on. <laughs> as those who are spirit, when you walk along the road, you see these opportunities coming. Kind of what is this? When I was when I was out there using, they weren't presented like this. What the hell is going on? But right? I'm a new creature in Christ today, right? Hallelujah. If I stoop to my thinking, my old default saying will say, steal that, add that, that's yours, claim it. That's your stick it in your pocket, right? My old belief is it would think nothing about doing that and thinking that's mine. I'm having that. I'm claiming that now. Hallelujah. So I'm giving you some examples, right? Because you might be thinking and they're going, well, I'm a new creature in Christ. What's he talking about, right? Do you know what I mean? Well, I'm just talking to you about some real talk here, right? <laughs> because some of these 
old belief systems will put you back in places where you, you, you'll, you'll be in a position where you go, how did I end up here? My old belief mm. system, let me tell you about my old belief, belief system. You know, when I used after 19 years, yeah, 19 years of staying clean, so I can talk about recovery in a in, 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 in a way. When I used, when I used that first drug, and mm. prior to that, I was using everything else. So mm. I weren't even clean anyway. So when I talk about using everything else, I was using sexual, uh, um, I was using money, I was using gambling, I was using mm. all these other things. So do you know what I mean? All these things wasn't good enough. So when I put that first drink and drug in, right, okay, right, when I put it in, it was like, wow, let's... um. Mm. Let's have a party. Let's have a real, real party, right? And 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 over nineteen years, I built some some good foundations through the step work. You know, I built some good principles. I built some good morals. The steps right sized me in so many different areas. But let me tell you something, right? After a month in the crack house, that was all gone because I resorted straight back, as it says in the book, to animal instincts to what I knew my default setting from before. Go and read the book, the basic text. I believe what's page, whatever it is. It says relapse and recovery. When we go back and we go back into that place, we go back into that default setting, Ooh. right back to where we come from, rubbing out every single stamp when we go into that full mm -hmm. place of using inactive addiction. Yeah. That mm -hmm. default setting. I don't mm -hmm. care. I did, I'm going to carry on doing what I want to do when I want to do it. And I don't give a shit about no one. S-H-I-T. Shouldn't mm -hmm. even say that. Either. But that's the reality of it is. Mm -hmm. I don't care about people. So one of my default settings could be mm -hmm. that I don't even care. I don't even care about my wife. I don't even care about my children. I don't even care about who I hurt when I want to get what I want, flesh. So Paul is clearly talking of something in the area of thinking. He mentions arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of Christ. He talks about taking every thought captive to make it obedient to Christ. The literal meaning of the word stronghold is a fortress. It's a strong, decisive building. In the context mm. of the stronghold, it's a faulty belief system that has reinforced many times over a long period. It prevents you from knowing God and his ways. It's sitting there in your mind, apparently strong impenetrable and it's like a castle hallelujah perhaps it started right back in your childhood when a little thought was planted in your mind by something or by something that someone said maybe you were bullied or maybe you were beaten up maybe you were uh, abused maybe you were in trauma maybe you something happened something negative maybe wow. Maybe you were told that you were useless. Maybe you were told that you weren't good. Maybe you were told that you were a failure. Maybe you were told that you were ugly. Maybe you were told it's your fault. Mm -hmm. Maybe the enemy lined up something else in a different time that said you did something different. Since you know this particular vulnerability about yourself, he ruthlessly tries to exploit it by lining people up or circumstances one after the other to give you that same wrong message. Mm. so if you've got people in your life that are lining you up keep them at arm's length the world adds insult to injury and it gets stronger and stronger it can then become part of your default thinking and works itself out in our behaviour mm. And when someone suggests that we can go for a particular job or we can do something positive, they go, no, you can't. You're not ready. Or you even say to yourself, maybe for all these messages that I've had in my life, maybe I'm telling myself I'm not ready. Maybe it's getting to a place where I'm deep rooting, where I'm thinking I'm setting myself up for failure and I can't move forward in my life. We believed it for so long, it becomes part of the lives and we can't think of anything different. A good definition of a stronghold is a belief system or habitual pattern or thinking that is not consistent mm -hmm. with what God tells you is true.
feelings of inferiority, insecurity, inadequacy are all strongholds. Because no child of God is inferior. No child of God is insecure. No child of God, I want to tell you this morning, is inadequate. If you take nothing from this group this morning, as a child of God, I want to tell you this morning that no child of God is inferior. If you take nothing else, just take these three things from this meeting this morning, that no child of God is insecure. Mm. That no child of God is inadequate. Hallelujah. No child Ooh. of God is dirty. No child of God is ugly. Strongholds can have two faces. Mm. When we know what we should do, but don't seem to be able to do it. Recently, I've been procrastinating about my assignments. And I put it off and I put it off and I put it off. I put it off to so many, so many uh, over the last four weeks. And I put everything else on top of it that it's become a stronghold. Mm -hmm. mm. 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 Woo! Mm. we call them strongholds but psychologists might call them defense mechanisms they are ways of thinking and acting that have become deeply ingrained in the mind mm. it doesn't necessarily take something to be repeated over a long period of time to set mm. up a stronghold a one-time powerful traumatic experience can do it because of its intensity. It could be a divorce. It could be a rape. It could be a death. If you were abused, it might come to see yourself as a victim, helpless, never to be able to stand up for yourself. And at one time, you may have been true, but that true might not be your truth anymore. Mm -hmm. If you're a child of God, God is with you. It's not the traumatic experience itself that produces the trauma. It's the lie we believe as a result of the traumatic experience. Whatever has happened to you in the past, you can go back to that traumatic event and process it again from the position of who you are now, a holy child of God. No Christian, no matter how bad their past experiences, has to remain a victim. God doesn't change our past. He sets us free from it. He doesn't change it. He sets us free from it. So when you're in that place of, I want to forget my past, God doesn't forget your past. He doesn't change your past. He sets you free from it so that you can go around telling people what God has done. How we set you free. How you are no longer in bondages of your past. How you've been set free from that. And to release you to set others free. Tempting thoughts that are not dealt with will immediately lead to actions. Repeating the actions will lead to a habit. So if we got thoughts or situations that we've not dealt with that we can't just put to one side, it will lead us into repeating actions that will continue into the habit. Satan is actively trying to tempt you into that same sin time and time again because he wants to set up strongholds in your life so that you can keep going round and round in circles in that loop, in that endless loop, so that you then start even believing the lie yourself. The Bible is clear that there is a way out of every temptation, that there is a short extra um, way out, and that's called repentance. The problem with strongholds is that they lead us to act on lies, mm -hmm. false information, cause our feelings to be out of line with reality. You may feel rejection when you are not actually being rejected. You may feel helpless to change when you are not actually helpless at all. For example, you may feel that you will never get out of a particular sin when in fact you have everything you need to walk away from it. Hallelujah. 
that mm -hmm. we need freedom. Freedom and maturity are not the same. The moment you turn to Jesus, you are not expected to be instantly mature. When babies are born, they drink milk for a while before they move on to solid food. But if a baby keeps acting like babies as they get older, they become less attractive. Any Christian can become an old Christian. All it takes is time. Any Christian can become a more mature Christian. But many don't. Why? Because they don't know how to deal with their strongholds. Mm. Close the door on the enemy. Yeah. Close the door on him. Take responsibility for the whole of your life. Mm. Yeah. In the steps to freedom in Christ, you have taken away the footholds the I enemy have. had in your life. You. Mm. It's given mm. you the power. It's giving you the resource. The key reason that you can now demolish mm. world, even those that have tried a time and 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 time to take you down, but have failed. Yeah. Take everything mm. captive. Mm. You can think. You can think of your mind like being an airport that you are in an air traffic controller. A lot of thoughts ask for permission to land, but you have complete control over which land will come to land. <laughs> I like that. That we are in a battle, a battle between truth and lies. That's the battle. What is truth? What is lies? That every stronghold is entrenched in a lie. That's what you need to understand. That we are in a battle in truth and lies. The key to demolish it is to uncover the lie behind it and then replace it with the lie of truth. Be transformed through the renewing of your mind. You can use it. We They call it strong old busting to renew your mind. <laughs> Don't treat this stronghold as something that you can't deal with. Persevere with it. It may sound easier, but the lie is easier to believe. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you that you have not given us a spirit of fear, but you've given us a spirit of power and sound mind. As your children, Lord, I pray that we use your Holy Spirit to guide us and teach us that the best counsellor in the world, the best therapist in the world, the best you know, the best of the best of top counsellors, therapists, is the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's the governor of therapists. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, imagine that. The top therapist in the world declared on faith walk this morning is the Holy Spirit. And it's free. It doesn't cost anything to receive. And you can call upon it 24 hours of the day. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. The meeting is now open. I enjoyed talking about that. I feel set free. <laughs> Any strongholds, you have been broken. I'm going to fly through my assignment today. Hallelujah. Because I've declared to you, Satan, <laughs> your stronghold has been broken upon me right now. Because I've declared to my brothers and sisters, I'm going to move on. Hallelujah. Woo! And that's sometimes all it needs. A declaration of, I'm not going to let this lie hold me back. Conan, my brother. Hallelujah. Good to see you. Open. Hey. <laughs> He's on the cardio.
he's, he's talking. We can't hear him. We can't hear you. Headphones not working. Here we go. We've got some technical fun. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. You've gone again. Okay. Pastor, shall I jump in whilst Con? Yes, please. Can yeah. you sort Con, you sort that out and then jump back in after me? Yeah. <clears throat> um. All right. So I'm kind of in a battle at the moment, and hopefully you can give me, uh, if you've experienced it, you can give me some, um, some advice or at least uh, your experience. So I spend a lot of my time alone and i spend a lot of my time um kind of pursuing christ whether that be if i'm at the gym i'm listening to worship music or um the bible and um, if i'm in the evenings i'm either watching sermons or i'm reading the bible um and just um, the calls that we have um and then church on sunday so i spend a lot of my time just seeking christ um what i'm finding and i think this might be the strong man is i guess to sum it up i'm worried about losing myself although I know that's the right thing. I'm worried about losing myself because of... I, so when I've come to speak, when I talk to people, Christ is literally the, the the cornerstone of all of my conversation. And if it's anything outside of it, so I start to struggle. So I don't know whether I need more hobbies um, for more content of communication or whether um, I'm not working at the moment, so it could be could be that. Um, it could also be... Um, could be the enemy... Um, trying to tell me that the strong you lose yourself and the strong man is is trying to push back on that. Um, so that's where I'm struggling, and I think where I'm really struggling is is that say I meet say I meet a woman, and all of my conversation is around Christ, and there's no other conversation about who I am or whatever the case may be. And back in the day, I'd go, you know, I'd have 101 things to ask, 101 questions, and loads of other faff to talk about. Whereas now. Christ is the cornerstone of my life, and it's it's just this the strong man now pushing against against that and saying, okay, do I need to approach this in a different way and not make Christ so much all of the center and still keep a bit of me in there? So I don't know if you've experienced that, but I'm I'm what am I now? Maybe about fourteen months properly into to seeking Christ, maybe a little bit longer, but I'm eighteen months in recovery, uh, 15, 15 months since I've really been seeking Christ. So. Amen. Amen. That's really powerful <laughs> what you just shared there. Really, really powerful stuff. And I remember my first couple of years in recovery. The inner critic was very, 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 very loud. But I want to tell you something right now. That God's power was leading and guiding and I was able to follow his pathway, which is what I would continue to advise you doing. And by just following that pathway and staying true in your faith and separating the truth from the lies that the enemy is frightened about what you're going to do in the kingdom. Hallelujah. Just stay true in your faith. Faith is about believing in the things that we, can, we, we can't see. Mm. I couldn't see where I am today. You know, when I was broken, you know, in that first year in recovery, you know what I mean? Lost my, my, my family, lost my children, lost my business, lost my home, lost absolutely everything you know, due to, to my um, stupidity and my behavior and my active addiction. I couldn't see, you know, that coming back into recovery at a 48 year old man with nothing as to where. Christ was going to lead me and all my conversations whether they was in 12-step fellowship whether they was in church whether they was anywhere was all about Christ I'll tell you what Christ Amen. brought me he brought me a beautiful wife he brought me a beautiful family he brought me a beautiful children he brought me a beautiful ministry he brought me a beautiful life just for today because I kept my faith in him do not be conformed to the patterns of this world. 
keep your eyes on him he's leading you through to the path of righteousness and where he's leading you is better than anything that we can lead ourselves and keep speaking about him servant of god you're doing a remarkable journey god is doing a mighty mighty work in you keep the faith god bless you thank you i appreciate that and there is this you know there's a lot of things that you've said today which is which is definitely relevant um to my situation so i really appreciate it thank you god bless you brother conan is your 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 mic situation sorted can you hear me i can hear you loud and clear yay success technology eh? (laughs) um strongholds either there's those on the surface that are superficial right and then there's those that are deep deep festering you know ones that just will not go away and it's a constant step six and seven stuff you know i mean the stuff on the surface is like the sacrifice i have to do to attend faith or i mean think think about the the sleep deprivation I, i suffer to have to get up so much earlier to attend the meeting the costs of my internet and electricity oh poor me poor me anyway that's the superficial stuff the steep stuff like constant battle in six and seven it stuff just does not go away you know how much i try to ignore it it comes back no matter how much i try to fix it it comes back and it festers and it gets worse it just doesn't go away and it's conflictual and you know i seem to know on some unconscious level of that stronghold that i've built up over a long period but i've just become blind to it you know i need guidance on how to break these strongholds break these conflicts to recognize them and to find out how to work as six and seven in a way that is constructive rather than deconstructive. Anyway, thanks for the meeting, guys. Um, that's my <laughs> rant over. Thank you. Solution. Solution. I'm willing. Yes, yes, you can, Cole. Give, um, you can come in after Mark. I'm willing, if you give me a call, to take you through six and seven, the biblical way, which will look at healing the brokenness through Psalms, which will look at um, the... God's abundant pardon on your life through removing deeper hurts. We should also come into a place of discovering hope and also allowing you to see that maybe some things might be not just be removed, but being improved. And as you go through the removing, you'll go through the improving. Hallelujah. So I shall be calling you okay and we shall be doing six and seven biblically okay let's do it i like that nike hallelujah nike on the platform well done conan we're gonna do it hallelujah amen to that (laughs) mark mcdermott then i've got carl yeah strongholds man it's a a powerful one i've been i've been kind of like speaking on strongholds to uh, a few family members and stuff like that and um helping them identify some areas in their life but also i'm realizing like when i got that deliverance pack the other day i was like yo <laughs> i was like strongholds like what strongholds am i ha- holding on to and i'm a private person do you know what i mean I, I i feel like i keep myself to myself and like, that's that's just how i am do you know what i mean and that served me well in in my in my past experience but um at some point within reason like obviously we need to we need to clean clear house like you said Ivor because I'm at a very I'm at a very similar place to you Neil yeah when you were saying about you spend most of your time like you don't have it with many people um the only people that you you do engage with are fellow-minded Christians like if I'm not reading my bible if I'm not like prayer if I'm not in study if I'm not listening to a sermon or something like that then 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 I'm I'm in the gym you get it so it's weird, but um, when you're talking to people, like I'm, I'm giving some a few posts to some family members, yeah, in regards to just how they're conducting themselves in relationship, and they're starting to see some fruits of of applying this stuff. But then when I'm hitting them up, like with certain scripture and stuff like that, like 
one of my family members is like, oh, like, I'm not into religious. I said, I'm, I don't deal in religion either. Yeah? I deal in God's grace. And then I'm hitting him with attributes. And I'm saying, you do realize over the last couple of months, these things that you've been applying to your life. Because yeah? when I'm summing up the Ten Commandments in one word, I'm saying love. If you're, if you're going to bring love, compassion, patience, put yourself in the other person's shoes so you can understand where they're coming from and things like this, yeah. I'm saying if you're starting to see fruits from using these these attributes, like you do realize the that the, the, where I've kind of learned these attributes from is from Jesus, bro. This these are things that just so you're you're applying like God's attributes to your life and you're already starting to see fruits. But my me personally, when I think to myself like um like you were saying, Neil, how potentially when you're around people that you would have been around in the past, you would have had loads of stuff to go, yeah, I'm like this and I'm like that and I've got this going on and that going on. The reason for why we're not like that anymore is because some of these people that potentially we might have been comfortable associating with now, now like we, we don't have as much in common because they're, they're not in Christ to a certain extent. And like, I, I, me personally, I feel that's like a Psalm 19, verse 1 of 5 none yeah where it says your word is a lamp on my feet a light on my path and it is basically it's almost to a certain extent it's like it's it's guiding us and it's protecting us and it's keeping us in in regards to like having the right people around us and engaging with the right people because in regards to you meeting a woman potentially maybe if you still live in that lifestyle you wouldn't be meeting the right woman but because you're in christ you know eventually when that 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 the right woman does come bro she's potentially going to be a like-minded Christian, you get it? Because it's only going to be someone that's not going to look at you like you're a madman and a Bible basher. That's going to be like, wow, he's a man of God. And that's a bit of me, you get it? So it's a, it's a blessing, bro. It's a blessing, man. So amen. And God bless you, you know? That's powerful. That's powerful stuff, man. That's powerful, powerful, powerful stuff. I'm looking forward to um, catching up with you later on today. Hallelujah. Well, yeah, I'm not looking you. forward to deliverance, but... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not looking forward to the livers, but you're funny. <laughs> I'll set Gemma on to you. <laughs> Gemma's been sending them out like wildfire lately. <laughs> Gemma the deliverer through Christ. Hallelujah. <laughs> Karen, over to you. You're next then, Amy. Yeah, Norman either. Um, I don't know. God's put me here for a reason. I, I woke up at 20 past six and thought, I need to go on the meet. I need to go on to this. Um, as you know, you know, I used to come here red at foul. Um, and um basically I took my own free will back, <clears throat> mixed up with the wrong girl, um as a friend, Karen thinking she could save the world. Um, and after I've been clean since 2006. And I've just come back from a relapse six that six weeks ago. Um because I thought I could do everything. Um in on the first of May, <clears throat> I went out to Israel for eight days eight days. And uh, um it was amazing. I'd only been a couple of days clean, uh, and I went out there and um well that really, really got me, you know, there, being there, being, um, it was just, ma it was just absolutely madness. I went, um, I got off the plane and I thought I could feel God in my presence as soon as I got off that plane. And I've just been doing, you know, coming back um, slowly but surely. And as you know, I've, I've been watching things and like, been watching the ministry and I think you know what it's about time I come back and give God back you know I want God back and you know to be how I used to be you know church regular this regular you know nothing else was just God 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 yeah you know, I've still got my book that I used to write when I was first on here with you um you know all my little scribbles and you know so yeah, it's really nice to um, come home and to actually, you know, cut. I've been wanting to come on here for ages, but it's just like, you know, it's like, I can't do that. I can't go back there. Um, it's just like, Karen, you need to get something, you know. Um, this morning, as I said, I woke up and it was just like, 
God telling me you need to get on that meeting and be a big girl again, you know, sort, sort your life out, Karen. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, I'm grateful for being here and um, God bless everyone that's on here. Thank you. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Man, this literally brought tears to my eyes, man. That's powerful. That's so powerful. Really, absolutely the most powerful thing. Welcome home. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Welcome home. Welcome home. You know, um, you know, the scripture that comes to mind is that God, you know, he goes and seeks the lost, you know, and welcome home. Please, you know what I mean? That's like I'm just so um I don't know, overwhelmed to the fact one just that you're here, two. You know, we've had some messages in, in between three, you know, just to kind of like God is just, you know, sometimes we get discouraged in, 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 in our faith and, and in what we do. Do you know what I mean? But thank you for bringing some encouragement to this ministry and to, 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 to the whole platform in terms of they just we're here. You know, thank God that God has sustained us to be here so that you can come back to 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 be in a place where you can come home, where you feel like this is home. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We give you glory, honor and praise for Karen right now. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, we just lift her up to you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask you to continue to guide her and lead her in all truth. Hallelujah. She continues to go through the, you know, the chastening and separation of the lies. Hallelujah. That the lie is done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, Lord, that we, we are with you today. Hallelujah. That no weapon formed against Karen shall prosper. Thank you, Lord, that you've sustained her through this in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, grant her peace. Welcome home. Grant her peace right now. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, beautiful. Oh, what a time. What a lovely morning to celebrate God's goodness and favor. We thank you, Lord, for what you're doing with your children. And not one of us get lost. Even when we go astray, that you're always looking out for us. Thank you, Lord, that you continue to touch hearts and minds in the name of Jesus. Amen. Beautiful. Welcome, mm -hmm. home. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome. You. Bless you. Sister Amy, over to you. Yeah. You're in the back. <laughs> The testimonies, you know, we overcome by our testimonies. Um, You're breaking up, Amy. To speak. Um, I just want to thank God. You know, sometimes we. Can you hear me? I can hear you. I can just about hear you. Try and get. Try, 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 can you again. hear me? That's better. You got again. Can you hear me? I can hear you now, loud and clear. Hello. I can hear you. Okay. Oh, I just wanted to say, you know, it's good to be here. Oh, she's gone. She's suffering a poor connection. Hopefully she comes back. <coughs> Amen. Hopefully she comes back in the name of Jesus. Whilst we're doing that, we're going to pray for Adam who's detoxing right now. Adam, where are you at with your detoxing, brother? Um, I've paused at 29 mil for now. Um, for the 29? As you probably know, I got rushed in the hospital the other week. And um, I've paused it for now until I um, level out for a while. Then I'm going to start moving again. Okay, let's pray that you um, continue moving forward in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you. We lift up Adam to you right now. Thank you, Lord, that you strengthen him, Lord, that you guide him, Lord, that you give him wisdom to move forward, Lord, not to stand still in the name of Jesus. Lord, give him the strength and power to continue in your will. Let your will be done in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you give him faith to keep on moving towards you cleansing his mind and his heart, continue to renew him through the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord, touch him right now, cover him with the blood 
Cover him in the blood, Lord. No weapon formed against him shall prosper. Lord, any doubt in his mind, let it be removed right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we come against every power and authority that says he needs to stand still in the name of Jesus, Lord. Move, let your power move for him in the name of Jesus. Touch him, Lord. Let him move. Move forward in him, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, let him, give him your strength and power. Let him, when he leaves this meeting today, Lord, know that your strength and power and authority is upon him to continue moving forward, Lord, that, that, that the enemy won't hold him back in this mindset of stronghold that he needs to, to, to move him, move him, even if it's half an inch today, 28 and a half, keep on moving. Hallelujah. Strengthen him right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let all power Hallelujah. and authority of the blood of Jesus come over him right now in the name of Amen. Jesus, Lord. I rebuke Amen. any form of Satan, any hold. I speak against any power that has a hold of him that's telling him to stop. Move forward in the name of Jesus, Lord, that no weapon formed against him shall prosper in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I come against every blood cell in his bone right now. In the name of Jesus, I come against every um, every um, cluck right now in his body. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Oh, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you. that Your power is all sufficient for him right now. In the name of Jesus, release any burdens of bondage of self on him right now, Lord. Your word says, come to me, all those that are heavy laden. Let him come to you today with his strength, with, with, with your any burdens, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we moved away from last week. Hallelujah. Whatever Amen. that traumatic experience was last week, Lord, it was not of you in the name of Jesus. Let your power reside in him in the name of Jesus. Lord, pray that you continue to give him wise counsel, people that would encourage him, Lord, strengthen him, Lord, to help him move forward in the name of Jesus. Father God, thank you, Lord, that you continue to bless him in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeshua Hamashek. Hallelujah. Let your will be done in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. El Shaddai, give him the peace, Lord, the peace, uh, the peace, the peace that surpasses all understanding right now, that you said in everything in prayer and supplication. Let your word that by his stripes that he is healed, by your stripes that he is healed right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Thank you so much, Ivar. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amy, are you back? Just what I needed this morning. Thank you. Yeah, amen. Can you hear me? No, you're loud and clear. Okay, I just want to thank everyone who shared because, you know, we overcome by our testimonies, you know, and, you know, God is faithful. We've got to believe that he wants us to be healed and that healing is his will. And, you know, we've got to pray and just walk in faith that it is done. We've got to just claim yes and amen, you know, and in regards to the strongholds, I think God is gracious, so he's also patient, you know he'll Amen. walk us through it he's actually slow to anger so we should never feel discouraged you know when we slip up we can always come back because the righteous man does fall seven times but he gets back up you know so i think we should just put our faith in the lord know that he is faithful and just to bring everything into completion so we don't have to rest on our own understanding you know just seek his face and he is faithful you know he'll do it even when you don't even know it will be done you know it's just he's just that good so um yeah and i reckon yeah just be patient with all your situations and just you know give it to god and you know trust his timing it's perfect for you and his will is perfect and he does want good things you know he doesn't want bad things for us that's not his will but because we live in a fallen state bad things can happen you know but we got to trust that we serve like i said a god that is bigger than us so and bigger than even our understanding so you know when we pray he is really faithful and just to move mountains for us it's just unbelievable how he works you know the unseen we just gotta pray believe that our prayers are answered you know believe his word stand on his word and also the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom so if we fear the lord really we have nothing else to fear if we fear just the lord and you know we trust in his word then we're really set so I think we should just stand on that, really. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's powerful. That's absolutely powerful. 
Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Amy, ministering that to 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 us this morning. <laughs> I'll tell you, um, <laughs> you know, I, I'm I'm going to give a testimony of God's grace and goodness, you know, because for me to see Amy just ministering here like that. You know, I know what Amy's been through in the last 12 to 18 months. Hallelujah. And if some of you have been man, on this platform for a couple of years, you'll know what Amy's been through for the last 12 to 18 months. Do you know what I mean? Delivered and set free from um, 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 the, the last faithful conscience. Do you know, and if you if you look, if you go and have a look at the, the faithful conference 18 months ago, you will see Amy, you know, um, being delivered from the demonic realm hallelujah so for her to be sitting here and there testifying god's truth right now this is nothing short of a miracle that i'm witnessing right here right now and i give god all the glory for that in the name of jesus hallelujah father lord we thank you for amy we thank you what you're continuing to do in her in the name of jesus we thank you for who she is in you in the name of jesus Father, Lord, we just lift her up to you. Father God, we thank you, Lord, that you are showing us miracles, signs and wonders today, right here. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we don't need to look too far to see your goodness and mercy. Hallelujah. And I want to just finish on this. You know, John the Baptist, one of the greatest preachers, you know, uh, of all times, needed to be reassured. So as believers, we sometimes need to be reassured. It says, by now, John had been imprisoned by Herod, discouraged and lonely. He began to wonder if Jesus was truly the Messiah. Why did he allow his forerunner to be in prison? Like many great men of God, John suffered a temporary lapse of faith. So he sent some of his disciples to ask if Jesus really was the one, if Jesus really was the prophet that had been promised, or should they still be looking out for the Messiah? Jesus answered by reminding John that he was performing the miracles predicted of the Messiah and more. And there was no room for doubt that the dead had been raised. <laughs> they were being raised up and not prophesied of the Messiah. And it was greater than the miracles that were predicted. Jesus also reminded John that the gospel was being preached to the poor in striking fulfillment of the messianic prophecy in Isaiah 61.1. Hallelujah. The ordinary religious leaders often concentrate their attention on the wealthy saviour. And the blessed is he who is not offended because of me, God said. God's blessing would rest upon those who by spiritual insight recognize Jesus of Nazareth as the promised Messiah verse 6 in Matthew 11 verse 6 and we should not be interpreted as a rebuke to John the Baptist that everyone's faith needs to be confirmed and strengthened at times if you're going through a lapse of faith right now the, let, let's be reassured that even John the Baptist's faith needed to be assured and needed to be strengthened that our faith sometimes can go weak can go weary can be we can, we can be doubtful that it needs to be strengthened and it's the one thing it's one thing to have a temporary lapse of faith and it's quite another to be permanently stumbled in your true identity of the Lord. Jesus said no single chapter is a story of a man's life. Taking John's life in totality, we record a faithfulness and also a perseverance. Hallelujah. Glory to God. May God bless you. May God keep you. May God continue to shine his face upon you. We have a wonderful testimony this Friday morning with our brother, Jaron. I'm looking forward to that. Hallelujah. Um, the Derbyshire lads are coming in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord, the Lord is blessing us with some lovely um, men of God. Be raised up hallelujah hallelujah and we're just like just seeing god's mightiness and goodness hallelujah <laughs> and you can see my new t-shirts today look you see my new t-shirts we're going to some outreach ministry prison we're going to we set those captives free hallelujah hallelujah so amen go on Hallelujah. To rise on, up. Hallelujah. That the army's rising up. And I'm looking forward to going to um 
uh, David's tent with my lovely family. So I'm going to be on a worship of praise all weekend. Praising God for more fire. Hallelujah. <laughs> to come in the name of Jesus. Yes, you can. You can have X, 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 L large. Okay. When you're going to come and see me do step six, you can come and pick that one up. Hallelujah. You're going to come on your bike on the train. Hallelujah. Look forward to it. I'll meet up with you. But listen, I need to do that work with you. Mark, I'll see you tomorrow tomorrow neil i need to pray with you karen welcome back um i'm, I'm going to reach out to you uh chris good to see you marion as always good to see you Jaron, look forward to seeing you friday amy well powerful testimony sister barb she woke up adam keep moving forward in your in your um um your detox don't stand still keep going the enemy's strong i'll break it today move forward even if you go down to 28 and a half move move through move through faith Hallelujah. Maxine, good Amen. to see you. Hallelujah. 27 and a half. Go down today. Come down. Move, 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 move. Prayer, prayer. We have some more prayer. We want to move. We want to move in the spirit. I'll call you later on today. God bless you. In the name of you. Father, Lord, we thank you for all our brothers and sisters. Cover them with the blood of Jesus. Lord, go in peace and serve the Lord your God. Amen. Take care, guys. Bless, Father. See you all. Thanks. Amen. God bless. God bless. Good meeting. Lovely, lovely, lovely.